Peace, family. This is your brother, Mark Lamont Hill, and this is Mumia. You know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> you know the name, y'all. That's right. Mumia Abu Jamal, Mark Lamont Hill, here on the Classroom and the Cell podcast. So glad to hear y'all's voice as we enter this new year. This is the first official episode recorded in 2024. Happy New Year, Moo. Happy New Year, Mark, uh, it's a, a new year, but not a new struggle. So, you, know? you ain't you ain't never lied, man. You ain't never lied. I've been thinking a lot about this upcoming year, and I know people do resolutions and commitments and all of that stuff. I'm not a big fan of that stuff because you know it fades away. As you think about the new year, is there anything that you hope we leave behind in 2023? <laughs> Uh yeah, but guess what? It ain't you know. It's it's kind of like uh, old Doc uh, Cornell West said, "Hope on a rope." I mean, listen, you can hope all you want, but if you don't right. work for it, it ain't happening. And yeah. it's that reason. Um, but, yeah. Although, let me say this. I think we we touched on this a little earlier, especially when we were talking about the Middle East. I think that this is a moment of eye-opening, not tied to the year, but to the events that we're seeing as right. human beings. And what that means is, you know, when minds are open, new consciousness flows, new ideas emerge, and people begin seeing the world in new ways. Uh, yeah, and I think this is the time for that. I, I think that's right. I, I'm hoping that, and I agree with you, you know, ain't nothing magical going to happen when the clock strikes to to make us leave something in 2023. But if I had to hope that something is fading away, as you said, not because of the calendar, but because of the events, it would be the the innocence, American innocence. We need an end to American innocence. You know, you talk about the, the Middle East just now. You referenced it, and you're right. I, I think that that gave us a window into not just how awful things this is are. A from Pennsylvania State Correctional Institution, Mahanoy. This call is subject to recording and monitoring. We didn't just get a window into what's happening abroad. We also got a window into how the U.S. supports and funds that. And I'm hoping, you know what I'm saying? And so the end of American innocence, why why isn't Biden calling for a ceasefire? Why are we sending money and weapons? We should have that view for every issue going on in the world. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but it's especially so when we talk about Israel, because as I've suggested to you at least twice, Israel is a re regional hegemon. It is the most powerful military force in that part of the world, which is astonishing, only because, you know, the American narrative and the Zionist narrative that we've received for most of our lives is that Israel's this small, tiny, weak, little... <laughs> right, they need that help. Right? Yeah. yeah, I mean, come on, man. Come on. It may have been that in 1948, and that's doubtful, but... Right. It, Certainly ain't ain't true today. Yeah, no, I, I think that's I think that's right, and I'm hoping that as we watch what's happening in Haiti right now, um, and as we observe the continued struggle in Sudan right now, um, we'll be equally sort of sober and critical in saying, you know what, these revolutions, these struggles, and this oppression. This is a call they, from Pennsylvania State Correctional Institution, Mahanoy. This call is subject to recording and monitoring. We'll recognize that all of this stuff that happens around the globe happens because there's a budget attached to it, because there's weapons attached to it, because there's policies attached to it. And we're not just the peacekeepers of the world trying to figure out how to, you know, everybody just calm down. Like, that's not us. <laughs> we're the no, people. That ain't the role. That's the, that's the rhetoric, but that ain't right. the role. And, you know, think about this. I mean, you know, we all kind of uh, come upon and play with contradictions because life is rife with contradictions. You know, we're, we're contradictory because we're human. But for a country that was born in an anti-royalty, anti-imperial 
revolution against the great British Empire, how comes it that people struggling against their uh, oppressors around the world find that the United States plays a role in deepening their oppression, not lightening their oppression? Right. How does that happen? And it happens because when countries take on new roles, they become new things. You know, there Ooh, is no good. thing yeah. as imperial democracy. You can't, the terms are <laughs> inherently you know, contradictory. Like, <laughs> inherently contradictory. It's like the saying uh, military intelligence. Come on, man. You know, <laughs> those two roles are are antagonistic to each other. And, you know, uh, when you become an empire, democracy has to die. It has to be sacrificed to create that empire. And I think people are awake, are awakening to the reality that the United States is an empire. That's obvious for some academics. It's obvious for a lot of radical activists. But for the average person, we're just a country doing our thing, and they're just a country doing their thing. But the idea that we are an empire or the idea that while – you know, land acquisition by force is kind of a uh, a relic of, you know, the pre-World War eras. We still do it just by other means. We have proxies. We have clients. We have agents. And, again, what you pointed out, what's going on in the Middle East is one piece of it, but we have to look at Latin America. We have to look at Africa. We have to look at the Caribbean. And when we see it in all those places and we see the same familiar fingerprints, the United States, France, Germany, Britain, you know, we start to see that the age of empire didn't leave. It just went, yeah, it, it, just, it just changed its clothes, it changed its MO, but it's the same practice. And, and sure. so, for, yeah, and that's, that's, and that's why I say the, the, end of innoc- the end of innocence, we can't vote anymore as if we're innocent. We can't say, oh, if Biden could just do a little more, or if Congress could just vote a little better, we'd be okay. We got to we got to understand that this is not a bug of our system; it's a feature. That's right. That's right. It's constituent. It, it's it's constitutive of it, in fact. Yeah. And uh, you know, unless we kind of carry that with us in our consciousness, you know, we'll fall uh, prey, you know, to the foolishness because yeah. it's easy for us to forget because that that truth is so powerful and so over. Archie, right? Yeah. But it's not reinforced. I mean, you know, you won't read this in the Times or whatever, you know, the daily paper you have in your in your neighborhood if you still have one. But you remember the cat Chalmers Johnson? Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh man, he wrote the book, his his biggest book of his lifetime was Lowback. And people began ordering and reading it after nine eleven because he explained it all. And he, this was a cat who was essentially a rightist, you know, right-wing thinker, um, who grew up in the Navy and had a very militaristic view. And then, uh, you know, he was an autodidact, so he learned very quickly. A friend of his on the book taught him Japanese, not just how to speak it, but how to read it and write it. So during the Second World War, when he went over there, he began reading the royal, uh, the records of the empire, the Japanese empire at that time, right? Mm -hmm. And he got a great awakening. He was like, whoa, this is like familiar. (laughs) (laughs) Real familiar. Yeah, because an empire is essentially the same thing, no matter what kind of empire it is. It, It has an imperial identity. And he, yeah. he matched that to the American Imperium. And he began noticing things that he had never noticed before. Like in Blowback, he talks about there are over 800, eight, think about this, 800 military bases by the United States all around the world. Wow. Wow. 800. That's a and, stunning number. Uh, it's astonishing. I mean, Rome didn't have nothing like that. You know, and Rome was the <laughs> right. prototype, right? Yeah. And and you know, it 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 he became a right rightist. I don't want to say right wing, but a right leaning anti imperialist. 
because he saw that essentially anti- uh, uh, empires eat up and destroy democratic features of the country in which it emerges, its home country. And that was not cool to with him. And I read like four of his books, and um, every one was like an eye-opener and fascinating. But to, to read this cat from that kind of anti-imperialist slant, was remarkable. You know, he wasn't a Marxist, he wasn't a leftist, he wasn't a radical, but he he believed in democracy. If you believe in democracy in any form or fashion and you engage the nation state, the modern nation state, you're always going to have your hopes dashed. You're always going to get some cold water splashed in your face, you know, because it's just just not what these things are. No, no. It has the rhetorics of democracy, but it never has the practice. Right, and the problem is we're con- we continue to operate as if that is a, f- a, 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 a again a bug, right? That's something that we can fix if we just do our democracy a little better. If we just elect the right leader, if we just organize right. a little more, we can get we can close the gap. And what we don't seem yeah. to understand is that that's not how this thing works. That nation states are inherently violent. They are by design exclusionary. They only live through forms of various forms of violence. It's not that, as Weber talked about, you know, it's Max Weber, it's not, it's about having the state having the monopoly on violence. States don't want to end violence. They want the monopoly on violence. And so, and, and, and so as long as that's happening, whenever you go out looking for democracy or dreaming about democracy or fetishizing democracy, as some folk do, you're going to end up thoroughly, thoroughly disappointed. And and that's why I, you know, the old preacher said, you know, like I, like I, like I said in my opening, I say in my conclu- conclusion before the benediction, and as we move forward, as we age, um, we gotta, we gotta end this expectation of innocence. We gotta, we gotta shed ourselves of the innocence because the innocence will set us up for more, not just disappointment, but it'll undermine our ability to get more free. It'll undermine our struggle for liberation because we we keep pretending that this structure this system this institution has the capacity to produce something that it just can't do it, it just ain't got you it have one minute left well said brother but let me let me put a twist on that if i may yes sir innocence is for babies <laughs> <laughs> right so right we need to like grow up and be adults about it it's that real i mean yeah it's one yeah. thing if kids believe in you know santa claus and you know the moon fairy or easter bunny that's cute. But for us to believe in a democracy that we have never seen or have seen, never seen more in its violation than its application, then we have to, like, kind of grow up, you know, put on our big boy and big girl pants and, like, act like we know. That's so real. We can't just grow old. We've got to grow up, too. That's the charge for all of us, man. That's the charge for all of us. My brother... It is so good to talk to you in this new year. I couldn't imagine a better way of starting my new year, my Thank first day. Thank you for using Securus. Goodbye. Love you, brother. Love you too, man. On the move. Man, you just heard the first episode of the new year, 2024, of the Classroom in the Cell podcast. Make sure you check this episode out, as well as the previous seven episodes that have been recorded. Uh, they're all on the Mark Lamont Hill official YouTube channel. You can check them out just by visiting YouTube and going to Mark Lamont Hill. You can also hit the subscribe button. That way you can get episodes regularly and get notifications of new episodes as you check out the old episodes. And, of course, you can get a whole lot of other great content on the Mark Lamont Hill official YouTube channel. And if you're so inclined, hit the join button, become a part of the official channel family so that you can not just listen and subscribe, but also support the expansion and the growth and the maintenance of this channel where we're trying to give you radical political education. We're trying to give you critical analysis. We're trying to give you something different than you can get in the normal news outlet. So check us out, Mark Lamont Hill, on the official YouTube channel. And, of course, support Mumia Abu-Jamal by purchasing all of Mumia Abu-Jamal's books. He is one of the most prolific authors of our time. Check out Prison Radio to listen to Mumia's voice in other venues. And, of course, as always, Let's keep struggling. All right, family, have a wonderful 2024. We hope to be a part of it every step of the way. Peace.